Good morning. I'm Leonard Hamlin, Canon Missioner of the Washington National Cathedral. And on behalf of our Dean, I welcome you to this morning's prayer and devotional service on this Wednesday, March 24th, 2021. Won't you join me in a word of prayer? Almighty God, we come so ever grateful for the beautiful day that you have provided, the life that you have shared with us. May we embrace you, embrace this life, while embracing our neighbors. And so we are so ever thankful for your presence with us and your love towards us. So now may we have ears that we may listen in order that we may truly live in a manner that would be pleasing in your sight. This is our prayer. In the wonderful name of Jesus we pray, amen. I'm thankful for this morning this opportunity to be able to join together. And as we come together this morning, our reading comes from the Gospel of John, the eighth chapter, the 31st through the 42nd verses. And the scripture reads, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you that what I have seen in my father's presence and you are doing what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only Father, we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. There are so many different interpretations and perhaps commentaries on this particular passage. But if we focus in on the words of Jesus from the very start of the passage that was lifted for us today, it says, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Jesus in his coming was speaking not to just some, but he was speaking to all. And that as we would listen to his teachings, grow in our understanding and in our practices, not only would our lives be different, but the world in which we live would be different. That our responsibility is the transformation, perhaps of some of the things that we have set down in stone and perhaps some of the hardness that we have in our own heart, but also the transformation of the world in which we live. That as we look out in this moment in which we find ourselves, we find ourselves where individuals have put themselves and taken in positions and taken hard stances to not be moved in any way by love and concern for a neighbor and not wishing the best or hoping the best or practicing the best for each other. And if we're really to experience the fullness of life, it is because we've been able to hold to his teachings. 
and to give the witness that is needed for just such a time like this. It was Dr. Martin Luther King who said, no one really knows why they are alive until they know what they would die for. In reading this passage, Jesus was very clear that he knew why God had given him life in the flesh, why his witness here on earth was going to be so transformative to the world and to all of those who would hold to his teachings. Well, on this day, as we are wrestling with both life and death, that we would be able to live our lives in a way where we would be inspiring and life-giving to each other, where we'd be inspiring and here advancing each other for just such a time like this. And so on this day, he says, if you hold to my teachings, you are really his disciples. We're growing closer to the day where we will draw closer to the cross and closer to the resurrection. But on this day, I have to ask myself, have I held to what he has taught me already? As we come on this day, I invite you to join me in the prayer that many of us are bold enough to lift in this day that he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we go from this day and move out into all of the responsibilities and tasks that we have, I remind you once again of words of Dr. Martin Luther King who said, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? Let's hold to his teaching that we might be mindful for others. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ rest and rule with each of you now and forevermore. Amen.